Hello again. Here's a couple of ray casting techniques that allows one set of geometry to deform around another set of geometry whilst keeping its volume. That sounded very dry, <laughs> let's get on with it. The design has already been established. All the elements are, let's say, fairly fluid. And just for this tutorial, I've split these elements out into individual objects. You don't have to do it like that, obviously. Just make sure the pivot points are in the correct places. We'll quite simply start off with the body. It's just an object that started as a quad sphere and has been subdivided. And we'll put that into front face wireframe. We'll begin with the eyes using a technique that has been probably the most widely documented. Okay, so I've got an eyeball here. It consists of an eye that's pointing down to plus Z. There's the eye. It's just got a stylized highlight and the eyelid, which is again, just half a quad sphere, which has been sub patched. So we'll send that to layout. Here they are, this little lot here. We'll give them a color if it helps. Let's create a null and call it eye left. And then we'll parent all those layers to that eye left. And while we're here, we'll create another null and let's call it target, eye target. There's our eye target. We're gonna move that forward and up a little bit. Select that eye and we're gonna give that an item shape as well. I could have done that earlier. So that's good. And what I'm gonna do also is select all my eye pieces and I'm gonna lock them. So we can't select those in the viewport now. So we just got our eye parented to this one null. And while we have our eye selected, M for motion options, and we're gonna target that to our eye target. There we go. While I remember, I've got this little highlight on the eye. Let's select that, press P for properties and go over to the render tab. I'm gonna turn off all the shadow catching and receiving and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so that's good for that eye. Now let's get on to the ray casting. We'll only be adding this to our null object here. M for motion options. Let's get a nodal motion, double click on that. Now this will be probably the easier of the techniques. So let's go for a raycast node, raycast geometry, there it is. We'll double click on this and we will select the body from our objects that we want to raycast to. We want to project along the Z in this case because we're going in this direction. So where it says ray direction, we'll change from minus one to one along the Z. We'll take the intersect, plug it into the position You'll notice it's jumped to the back of the body. So all we need to do is move this null until it jumps to the front of the body. So as we move across the body, it follows the contours nicely. If we go outside of the body though, it'll snap to wherever this null is. So don't do that. Make sure it stays within the confines of the body. And if we go to a double view, let's pick this one for instance, we can have a front view here and move it around and we can check what's going on in perspective view up here. We'll close this down. The eye is still selected. So we'll go over to item, clone, clone hierarchy. There it is, I2, plus we'll rename that I right. Move that to the left slightly. And the nice thing is this also works with the scale. Good, one down. Next up are the eyebrows. This couldn't be easier. I've got a left one and I've got a right one. I'm gonna be using a different ray casting technique here. So the only thing I'm using additionally is a weight map. There it is. All it is is this end is at zero and this end is at 100%. And this was just using weights, full offset to linear, 100%. I think it was this one along the Z, and all I did was apply that. So it automatically graded from zero to 100 for me. So there they are, left and right. Let's go and load those up. Here they are. I think I might turn the body back on. Here we go, so we can see everything nice and clearly. Let's move them up here, and I'm gonna move them in front of our body right from the beginning. So the left eyebrow can go over here. The right can start down here. Now you could probably argue from an animation point of view, it would be better not to attach these to the body, just have them floating. 
And I think you'd probably be right, but let's try another ray casting technique, which isn't so widely documented. Firstly, I've noticed I've got the eyebrows backwards, so, so don't make that mistake, obviously. So let's swap those around to begin with. We'll start with the left eyebrow. So let's select that pre for properties and under the geometry tab. In fact, let's delete all of these except for subdivision and that just to tidy this up. Let's turn on the nodal displacement and open that up. So we have our ray cast geometry here. Let's add one of these. And as before, we're gonna use the body. We're gonna take it off the Y and we're gonna project along the positive Z axis. You may think we use the intersect again, but no, not in this case. We'll be using the clipped ray. So we'll take that into the input and what we'll see is the geometry has been squashed down onto that body geometry. So we can still move it around. We just need to get the volume back. And to do that is surprisingly simple. So let's get a scalar. We'll plug that into the offset. Let's jump behind, as you can see. So let's bring this up. It looks like we might have to go minus. So we'll bring it to minus 0.1, and you can see it's kind of almost done what we want. And I suspect the problem is this pivot point is too close. So let's bring this even further out from the body. Let's bring this eyebrow in a little closer. So we now have this eyebrow hovering over the surface. And now we're gonna use that weight map to bring in a bit of volume. So let's get a weight map. And we'll point it to the one that I showed earlier, which I called brow. Get a multiply node. Let's take the weight map into the multiply. Let's just replace the offset for the moment. Let's give it a minus number as we did before. Minus 0 0.01. There we go, we've got a bit of volume back there. Not too far though. Perhaps bring it back a little bit. Okay, and then let's just add that to the offset. Cool, and it should be as simple as that. Now again, we get too close to the edge. We're gonna get a distortion. Let's try a bit of rotation. I only want it on the bank, so let's turn off the heading and the pitch. That seems to be behaving itself as well, so I'm gonna keep it like that. Let's close that down. Copy that, select the right eyebrow. Let's turn on the nodal displacement for that and paste into, and it should have just done exactly the same thing. There we go, so nicely following the contour of the body. Again, let's turn off the heading and the pitch. That's good, so we now have two functioning eyebrows. It's worth mentioning that I have got a subdivision before the nodal displacement. Now I don't have a lot of geometry in the actual eyebrow, so I'm kind of getting away with it here. But if you had enough geometry in your base model, you might want to think about putting the subdivision after. But I'm going to keep it before the displacement in this case, just to get a smoother displacement. Just a quick mention on scaling as well. You may come across an instance where this looks okay rotationally and positionally, but when it comes to scaling, things might go awry, let's say. First thing you need to do is lock that Z axis so you don't interfere with that and keep it at one. That's good. Sometimes that doesn't work either. So what I would suggest is resetting all of this, add a bone, Let's turn off of the other deformers. So I've added a bone. Let's add the bone modifier, move it to the top of the stack and press R to rest. Let's turn on these modifiers again. And what I would suggest is moving it and rotating it around using the bone. Again, lock the Z and you'll get a much more predictable and stable result. 
But like I say, it seems to be behaving itself here, so I'm going to remove it. Finally, the mouth. So what we're going to do is we're going to be raycasting this piece of geometry onto the body, and we're going to metalink this mouth to it. Now this mouth is very simple. The only thing I've added is a morph just to show where to put it in that modifier stack. Here's our mouth link, as I'm calling it. Here's our mouth that we'll be meta-linking it to. I'm going to take the subdivisions down slightly. Now I've noticed in the scene that I posted that I used a bone on the mouth. I don't think we're going to need to here. But I have also noticed that my pivot point is in the wrong place. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to go to the mouth link. I'm going to go over to the move pivot and back view. I'm just going to move up that till it's sort of in the center. And there's space bar to get back to the move tool. So as before on this flat poly here, I'm just going to move it out. So it's in front of our body. I'm going to go to the nodal motion on this. Let's get the raycaster node. And again, as before, I'm going to raycast to that body, but I don't want it on the Y. I want it on the Z. Okay. And then we're going to clip Ray into the input. So if we move this around, but not too far, let's lock the heading and pitch. So we just got a bit of bank. Let's just remove what we're not using just for clarity. Okay. So let's select the mouth. Let's remove again what we're not going to need. So we'll need those two and remove. Now this meta linking will be the first thing to do in the stack. So let's double click on the nodes and we'll go for a meta link. Double click on that and we'll point it to what I've called the mouth link. Bizarrely. Okay. Into there. And it should now jump into place. Perhaps I will take up those subdivisions just to get a nice feel for what's going on. Okay, select our mouth. We see it poking through there. We don't want that to render, so we'll turn that off. Press front face wireframe. I'm going to lock the Z so we don't accidentally ping it to the back of the body. So there. So let's get these morphs in. So uh, mouth selected, P for properties. We will add the morph mixer. Let's just go forward a couple of frames and plug it at 100%. Now I'm also going to put that morph before the subdivision. There you go, nice and smooth. The downsides to using morphs and meta links, if you do push it too far, you get these weird distortions. So that's something to be aware of. If you've got a copy of Third Power's Cage Deformer, you may get a much smoother result. Alternatively, you could use the same technique as I've just used on the eyebrows directly on the mouth with a weight map. And the last tip for this, let's select our mouth link as we have. If we want to set that mouth back a bit, let's just use the same trick as we used earlier. So let's get a scalar and the offset. We probably do want a positive number here, but just very small. There we go. So you get the idea with that. We don't need to for this. In fact, perhaps we could have the mouth hovering from the body itself. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, that's for you to decide. And you should have enough here to start keyframing away. That's essentially it. There's a few more techniques I want to touch on, but I think this is plenty for one session. Just a word of warning though, as has been pointed out many times before, the lightweight ray casting is not the most robust. So you may need to bake out and perhaps iron out some wrinkles. Hopefully there's enough information here to get you started though. See you soon.